Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. Riley has been unsettled all morning because I've been kind of like running around the house with a bee in my bonnet trying to get things done and he is trying to get under my feet so if I go on an adventure I don't forget him. So I just wanted to give him a snuggle and let him say hi to you guys and your dogs and cats before we get started. So here we go. Uh, he gets to lay on one of my quilts. Nothing like a stitching buddy and a fur friend when you're um, when you're at home doing your stuff in a place that you love. It's been I think only two weeks since I did my last floss tube video, but. Um, I, I really feel like I should do them every week, but I don't have a steady work schedule. So there's nothing consistent in my life. And um, so this is just how I do. I know it's gonna be at least an hour, but there's so much that I wanna share. And I was trying to catch up on my comments. I got way behind in my comments, because again, I got in what I call my hide and stitch mode, where I pull away from the world and social media and, and anything just so I can stitch and do what I need to do so I can keep going. Um, and again, my life is just super complicated right now, like everybody's, and I'm just doing what I can do so I can stay functional and deal with a new situation that came up up in the mountains that um, some neighbors and I are working together to deal with a situation that's kind of um, irritating up in the mountains. So I'm um, just doing some stuff and so all that to say, here I am, I've been doing a lot of stitching, I've been doing more finishes. So last last time I did my video, this is floss tube 33, so number 32, I showed my wonderful finishes and I said, oh, you can get these on Brenda Gervais Country Stitches Online. And I got a comment back asking about, I can't find peace on earth, am I missing something? And I looked and it was like, oh no, all of her older, um, needle punch or punch needle are gone. I swear I just saw them the last time I looked. So hopefully they will be back. But these were finishes that I showed last time. So I'm sorry. And then I, I, I have a hard time because I want everybody to be happy and that's just not going to work out. But I was, I was playing around in my room and I have this guy up. And it's like, well, of course this is a Brenda Gervais because I did these probably 10 to 15 years ago. So hopefully that piece on earth will come back in stock, but it's PN 192 piece on earth. I just did a Google search and of course they're too expensive. And then that flag girl, oops, I just dropped something. This is why as I read my comments, I know some people have a hard time hearing my voice. And I'm going to try to talk louder because like right now I have a fan going because it's hot and I tend to get all excited and I forget to project. So I'm, I video on an older iPad because it has the storage that could handle it, yet that may not be the best microphone. And I was thinking I did buy one of those mics that I could put under my shirt, but it's wired. And I did one of my Joy Nevertheless videos up outside up when I was in Colorado and it did great. And I've had requests to wear that here. But did any of you guys see that movie, um, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? And the girl, I can't remember the, the girl in the video when she went from front girl to her working girl. And she showed a clip where she was wired um, on the phone at the travel agency and she went to do something and it yanked her head. That's how I can imagine with me trying to wear a wire and popping all around my room. I may have to invest in a Bluetooth, but it's not gonna happen this month. So I'll try just to speak loud. So that, uh, I was gonna say that picture back there. I forgot, it's in my hand. So this is a Brenda Gervais. I remember I just did that spray, um, the Primitive Gathering spray on this. And yeah, it gets splotchy, but I think that's kind of what it's supposed to do. But I did primatize it and they're, they are all gone. Um, this is PN136 Long May She Wave. Hopefully they will be back again on Country Stitches Online. But that's the challenge with a lot of the needlework that I have done 
is very old because I'm very old and I did these quite a while ago. So, um, I'm sorry. Hopefully they will be back in stock. So again, I'm trying to project, um, something else to two other things to clarify. I had done a video when I was new into cross stitching because when I got back into cross stitching a year ago, um, I couldn't see the linen and I had done Ada in the past and I, I do so many needle arts. What excited me about the new cross stitch was the linens and I couldn't see them. So I got what I called my perfect stitching setup. And I think it's like floss tube number four. Well, look what happened to my perfect stitching setup. I broke it. So another one will be delivered tomorrow. We tried to fix it. I had this kind of all wrapped up. And then my husband, who is amazing with fixing things, we didn't have that instant super glue. So we're going to have to, I've tried E6000. Anything that takes a long time to dry is not working. Duct tape didn't even work. So last night I was stitching and I had to move my head to stitch because I was going to stitch and it, it's not coming in. But the way that I have this, and I, I have the whole video that I talked all this about, but this is my setup. I have this in my lap. This is my magnet thing. It's all talked about and linked in that. Um, I'm working on something with silk and needle and then I clamp this baby on there and that's, I love it. Um, I cannot, even though, or maybe it's because I wear prescription lenses to see. This is the only time I take my glasses off. I feel, I feel like I can't see doing this, but I always have my glasses on. Mag eyes did not work. This worked. And, and I pull this out and my floss tube friends are talking to me over here and I have my stitching set up, but that's why I had a kinked neck last night because I was going to stitch and it just didn't get fixed. And that is a light. So it's a glass magnifier. That one is 1.7. They have them stronger. And then um, it has LED lights, which is awesome. This, this, um, so between the two of those, I have to have that magnifier to see. But I do love my BenQ light. And I've talked about that before. I did get that one free. But um, those two things are like my perfect stitching setup. So the problem, so the way I broke this was because to change the, to change the angle, every time I did something, I would change the angle and I did it from here. Well, that's what broke that. And yeah, I should have known better, but I just thought, it was just easy to do. So now the one I have up at the cabin is not broken. And this one last night after it was broken, um, actually it's been broken for a week and I've been messing with it, but this is how I will adjust it. It just works a whole lot better to move that, but, uh, it works a whole lot better until you break it. So that's kind of a heads up. Um, uh, a lot of you that got that probably knew better. Um, or you've broken it already, but I've had that almost a year and I use it constantly and I'm cranking that thing around constantly. So for 31 bucks, um, you know, what was that? Less than $2 a month. It lived for a year. The next one is going to live a lot longer. And then I'm going to repair that one and we're going to get that instant glue. And that way that will be my travel one. So there we go. The other thing that I get a lot of comments on and questions on is a needle book that I designed based off something else and based off of an embroidery pattern. And I was going to comment on that comment and refer you back to that video. And now I've done enough videos where it's like, even though I keep a book of everything, I couldn't remember which one it was. So I'm going to give just a little bit more information. Then I'm going to show my new fully finishes and I've learned a lot new skills. This is my needle book. And this is the embroidery. So this is Chestnut Junction Love Palms. So see that heart? That's what I did. I did that heart and that's what I based it on. And then I can't find this needle book because it's in one of my project bags, but this is the book I talk about all the time. This is my reference guide for how to make project bags and these needle accessories that I'm working on these skills. I see this like as a class, but I get to do it in my house. Um, I had made this needle book. So it was based off of the needle book plus and I made it and I, as I was making it, I thought, Oh, 
I'm going to change it up a bit because that's what I do. So the stitched directions, but based on something that I wanted to do because I am doing so many stitching, just like many of you guys, you got to have places to do it and places to put it when it's finished is what I meant to say. So I did that here and I had just used iron on fusing and it started coming undone. So now I've just used the fabric, the Roxanne's fabric glue that I use for applique. I still like this loose edge um, because I like it. Now, the way that I designed it, I'm just gonna give you the dimensions and I'll try to type those in too in the show notes. So I learned based on another project in this book I made the tab and I learned how to do the magnetic tab, which I like, and I gave it space because this is like a project book, not just a needle book. So I guess I should be calling it a project book. I'm going to give you the dimensions, but it was simply based on the pieces that I had because I love working from my stash and the pieces that I had, I think they were a fat eighth or a fat sixteenth. But that's how I did this size. This is as wide as that piece was, and it wasn't much longer than this, but you can see there was some more. So this piece, this piece, oh, I may have to put my glasses on. Here we go. Glasses, reflection. But this outside piece, where'd you put that, girl? Where'd you put that? Good grief. Do I write it on the wrong page? I might have, I might have. Yeah, I did, I wrote it on the wrong page. Okay, so um, the outside is 14 and a half by eight and a quarter, finished. 14 and a half, eight and a quarter. Now, because I had a large piece of wool and I like it because it grabs onto stuff so I could just put something here, shut it and it will stay, it won't come out. And I had a lot of wool. It was just a big, beautiful piece of wool. That piece of wool, is 12 and a half by seven and a half just because that's what it fit inside here this is wool done with wool thread definitely don't have to use that but i just had it but that is this and this so i just mimicked that right there now these two pockets were because i could put a hoop in here this is a five inch hoop and I gave it a little bit of room and that's why I wanted this piece not to go super tight so I could put chunky stuff in here. This piece is based off of other pre-cuts that I had. This is a layer cake, a 10 inch by 10 inch piece. So what I probably did, it was folded in half. All the directions on how to make that again are, are in that book. So I'm not gonna go through that. So that book is still available. That's how wide I was doing a lot of my pieces because I was using pre-cuts. Um, because these are Kim Deal and Janet Nesbitt, Janet Nesbitt fabrics, and that's just what I had. So this again was another fat eighth or fat sixteenth. I couldn't tell you, it's just whatever that measurement was. This stops, you can see it stops on the inside because that's as wide as that piece could be based on this and the way that you make it. You make like a little sleeve and turn it inside out and line it, but that book is worth the money. Then this piece, so I could get a big thing here. This piece was simply, that was another, um, that was another layer cake piece. And then I just probably got a lid on something and drew the soft edges and did that. So that's this side. Oh, I went to show you this side and didn't tell you the dimensions, but I did reference and say, see, that was just another piece, another layer cake. Then this was a charm pack piece. Um, so this is another Kim deal. I just grabbed it off of one of my charms, my charm pack, see? So it was just that piece. I made it as big as I can, but I love pockets because I use these all the time. These are the thimble pads. Um, so they're little leather, sticky things and I use that's what I use I don't usually use I cannot my finger is wonky um, it's had a hard life um, so even though I have a beautiful thimble that lets your fingernail go through it doesn't work um, then I also love these is it upside down yep it is ultra needle threader ultra fine threader that's what it is um, let's take these off 
ultra fine threader. I get those from Peacemakers because I use, I do um, hand applique with hand applique needles from Peacemakers and you can basically not see the eye that you're sticking that in. So must use my magnifying stuff and must use my prescription. So hopefully that's helpful. This was something when I first showed it, I said it was so exciting for me because I designed it based off of the project that I made from Stitched. So hopefully that will help. I didn't design it enough that I could do a pattern for it. So hopefully I can just inspire you to find something. I'm going to show you a lot of my finishes where I just took a project, I made something around it based on stuff that I had. And I call that, when I cook like that, I call it peasant cooking. So I guess I can call this peasant making or peasant stitching or peasant stowing stowing sewing so hopefully that is helpful for you and didn't complicate more um, comment but I have been really bad at getting my comments in my hide and stitch mode but I have survived in the midst of chaos so that's pretty good all right ooh that's why Riley's nervous because it went he's on the floor it almost went on top of him okay I think we've no there was another comment okay so I just showed you that hoop let me get that without getting Riley. This is why I'm going to have to get a Bluetooth microphone if I do a microphone. Um, okay, I wrap my hoops. I've had questions too about what do I wrap it with. I came prepared. Okay, I get these from Traditional Stitches. Um, and it's just twill tape, but it is a good quality twill tape. It is um, made by Access Commodities. And for the small hoops, I use 3 8 for the larger, I have some of the Hardwick Manor wider. I think it's five eighths hoops or three quarters, whatever the wider one is. That's what I use the half inch for. It is just high quality cotton twill tape. You could use, I had one of my viewers say, you could just strip fabric and use it. I would use a fabric that did not have a dye on it, like a cream or a white. I wouldn't use a print unless you were sure it wasn't gonna come off on your linen. Um, but it is simply, all that is, is simply for the purpose, this baby, even though it's a Hardwick Manor, it just opens because it's a curve. Anyway, it's simply for the purpose of gripping your linen so you're not stretching the linen out all the time, stretching it. It works very well. Um, and unless you have the Duchess or the Princess hoops, which have the felt on the inside, which I have, um, you need something to help grip it. So there we go. I think that was all my answered questions. So here we go on some of my fully finished items. I have been really excited about my upcoming one year flossiversary. Is that what you would call it? Um, my very first floss tube was done on September 5th. So I have an anniversary coming up. And as I watch Celeste from Celeste Create celebrate her first year flossiversary, um, or I can't remember what she called it. I was really excited because I was thinking about myself. I was thinking about my dear Celeste and I was loving what she was showing, but I was thinking, oh, what have I done in this year? And I'm a goal setter. So when I started doing the keto diet and intermittent keto lifestyle, I kind of block it out because it's not always what I want to be doing. Keto and um, intermittent fasting. When I started doing that, I had to get really hardcore on it because I've, I've struggled with weight all my life and I, I just wanted to just deal with it. So I had goals. I had a monthly goal and in the first year, I lost 60 pounds. But it was only because I kept, I was hardcore and basically that last week is when I caught up on everything. But it got me there. Um, and so I'm doing that, I'm, I'm setting goals. So now I see Okay, so my one year anniversary is coming up. And what have I started? What have I done? What do I have that's not done? What skills did I think I could learn and didn't learn? What skills did I learn? And how is that just now part of my lifestyle? So it's really gotten me excited. And this is how I do my stitching journal. I'm a simple kind of gal, um, but it's, it's just kitten stitcher stickers and moleskin notebooks that you can get on Amazon. But this is how I do my stitching journal. So I started already thinking about it. So I, I just like 
doing writing and paper and erasing. This is what I do when I have my coffee. So I have a list and it's like, is it a whip? Is it a finish or is it an FFO? And so I do it in pencil so I can finish my FFOs. And then I've got cross stitch FFOs. And then because I also do wool, um, I've got my wool and then I've got my quilting and applique. So I'm just trying to get an idea of how many starts do I have? How many finishes do I have? And um, those fully finished items were not really happening because it takes a long time. I get all excited about the planning and the buying of it. That's my favorite part. And then I get it and then I put it together and then I start it and then I'm working on it and then it's done. And then it's like, mm, I want to get onto something fun because my personality is if it's not fun, it's not going to get done. So a lot of the finishing wasn't done until I made it my goal. So last floss tube, a lot of finishes. This floss tube, I learned some new goals because I got the confidence. So I was so excited to look at my pillows and, and see the skills that I was practicing and learning. And then I thought, oh, okay, what can I do now? So I, I had watched enough of Vanna Pfeiffer, the twisted stitcher, to get my feet wet into knowing how something could be done. And I didn't want to start watching a bunch of videos before I finished them. Otherwise, I wouldn't get it done. I knew I just had to jump in and do it. That's why I did keto. I didn't know how hard it was going to be. I didn't know I'd be on it for the rest of my life. Um, but I am. So if I had known all the details of finishing this appropriately, I don't know that I would have done it. So I just did it. And I was like, oh. Okay, that was a mistake. I'll do something different. Oh, then I watched Vanna's video and I thought, oh, okay, those are a couple more things that I'll do on the next one. But I was so excited because I have a finish and not just a, well, it's a fully finished item. This was my very first lacing and it is a box that I got from my mom. So I have a lot of these treasures from my mom and I got to deal with them, use them or give them away. So this was a cool old box from my mom. Oh, and I showed you the surprise. Okay, so um, also that little surprise in there was what really got me going. This is from the book Autumn by Loose Feathers. And I will put the conversion in, in there, but I used the 32 count vintage sand dune. But the colors, I just wanted a little bit more vibrant. There we go. The pumpkin, you can see the pumpkin is different. This is really washed out from the video, but I did I did a lot of different colors. So the pumpkin I wanted more vibrant, the bird I wanted more vibrant. And so I did it, I loved it. And the finishing of it was a good learning experience. I didn't cut enough and you can, I don't know if you can see, but I can see there's some puckers here because I didn't, it was only like a half inch that I had. Whereas this was like an inch or an inch and a half. So that was a smooth, that was puckery, so it's okay. Give myself some more space. Then I went through my growing, righty, where'd I put that? Oh, it's right here in front of me. My growing stash of finishing stuff. I got a new order from Lois at um, Lady Lady Dot Creates. So this is like my finishing stuff, and I pulled from all that. But I wanna show you what I used. So. For the outside edge, I have a basket with everything. So let's pull that forward. Oh, this I picked up at my local needle workshop. You're not going to see it, but it's like a purplish. It's called coffee bean, but it's more like a soft mulberry. But, it, but dye lots change constantly. This is Crescent Colors um, cocoa bean. And you know what? I think the thread was cocoa bean as well, but it is a small one. So I have three different sizes of chenille. This is very narrow, but as I was auditioning, um, it was great because the, the top of this box was kind of mashed a little bit and it went all the way to the edge. So this totally covered it up. And I just did the um, Aileen's tacky glue around the edge. So I remembered a lot from Vana, um, and so I've got this on there and it's glued and it's flat and I am so happy with it. The fun thing is it's a big box, so it's flat. I can just have it and it looks like a flat fold. It's there, but it's also, it's called the sewing pumpkin blossom sewing box. It is my sewing box. So the real reason I, I jumped in 
I'm just gonna show you. It was like an emotional day that I did it. I just needed something fun and funky, and I loved these colors. So I had not even planned on stitching this, this um, project until I was looking through here and I thought, oh, because it was all my finishes, I was getting so much confidence in my fully finished pillows, I thought, oh, I'm gonna finish up a small pillow so I can make another one. And so I thought, well, goodness, I've got this because I was just gonna make this. So I had the vintage sand dune, I had these colors, but I, I did those birds four times and then I'm glad I changed the color. So I will put my color conversion there. And this is what I keep flattening them. This is that little sweetheart. So, um, and I love the funky, this is, this is a Lady Dots Creates and it's called Bird's Nest. Um, and I love that it is primitive. So this is the bigger chenille. I'm going to throw that over there. And this is my, I love Joe Morton fabrics. This is just a, a fat quarter that I had that's about mostly gone now. But um, I am doing it where I am stitching on the bottom. I'm learning how, how to do all this stuff and practicing. And so I am using the fiber fill now. But what I learned from Vonna. I had just bought a big bag of some cheap fiber fill, polyfill. Vaughn only uses Mountain Mist, and as she was pulling it, it was like, oh, that is a much better quality. So now after I use my ginormous bag up, which I'm, I'm doing them tight now, so it'll use them up quick, I am going to get Mountain Mist. And I did not do the interfacing that she talks about. I did not do the white quilting cotton that she uses, and I will... I'm trying to talk fast because I'm seeing the time tick by and here we go. Hopefully you have a lot of work to do while you're listening to me. Um, so I'm learning. So this was where I just did it. I got it done. I got both of these done the same night. I was like midnight when I finished, but I was also playing around. This is the bottom of the box and it looked like this. So it looked like where you could see the glue. And I wanted something in the bottom of the box. So I had, this is, this is the way I used to finish my items before I learned how to lace, but it worked. It was just tape and it was template plastic. And I just wanted something very narrow because this is not very big. And I just cut it and I wrapped it like a package and it sits there. So if I decide to do something else, I can do something else, but it matches. And so that's on inside there. And then because I love matching things and I love my 80 weight aura fill because it looks so cool. Look at this. So I could even match that and it looks so cute. So this is what I use for my wool applique and my hand applique because it's 80 weight, very thin. So I may even do something with the inside of this lid. I thought, oh, I could do something, a magnet. I could do a washer and then um, a needle minder. I could do another stitching project in there. So. I'm excited. It's been sitting on my windowsill and, um, and I love it. So, oh, why isn't it shutting? There we go. Maybe it's just that. Oh, I know that thread just doesn't make, want to make it shut. So there we go. One fully finished item. And then as I was looking around the house at what else I had that I could finish things up, I pulled some of these. So this is just stuff I have hanging around my house. I like old things and I buy old things. This is some old funky um, index card box that I got a long time ago. I've used it for a lot of different things, but it was already damaged when I bought it. But a friend of mine just bought um, a home and she redid the front door with Restore a Finish. And um, we purchased something, we purchased some of that so we could do something at the cabin. And I thought, oh, that'll be perfect because it can help with um, varnish and it can, and I will do something on the top of this. But I was just looking around at what I had. I almost gave this back to the thrift store because I was trying to clean. And it's just one of those old fashioned things and I could use this for a sewing tray. So I may put something at the bottom. Same thing with the Restore finish. I love old wood. And then I had purchased this recently. This was just like Joann's, but it's, it's one of those paper, um, a paper box, paper covered box. But I thought, it just made me think, you know, because it was on sale, and I thought, oh, what if I put something on, it just reminded me of something that I could make from Blackbird Designs. Do something on the front, maybe leave those sides as they are, but it's magnet. And I thought that would be great when you travel. So those are the, just the fun things that we play with. Okay, drink time, drink time. Natural vitamin C. 
made out of vegetables. Yum, yum. Okay, a little bit tart, but it's good for me. Okay, now, um, some more fully finishes. Okay, so the next thing I, ha I had a list. Where's my list? Here's my list. This is what gets me going. I had this list and I wanted to start something else and I thought, no, I'm working on that list and I love, check it off. I love, I got a lot of check offs and that's what I'm going to show you. One of those items was an old finish that I had done and I wanted to make it into a pouch, but the directions, uh oh, oh, these are in here because I want to show you things. So I'm scattered all over the place, but this is just a piece of wood, piece of cardboard that um, the layer cakes come on. I save this because that's what I've seen some of the other floss tube friends saying, save this because you can use them. So that's, that's what I used. I just cut that with this. And I have a rotary cutter that is just for paper. And then this is that template plastic. It was the thinner template plastic on the floor because Riley's over here. Um, then the what Vana was talking about, which I did use on this is the Pellon 44F Fusible Light Pellon. That's what I'm doing now. She said that it holds the stitches on there. So as you have something that you're doing, a stitch won't come loose. So it holds it on there, just gives it a little bit of body as well. I did not line it with a white fabric. I have a bunch of beautiful ribbon from the days that I, I mean, I will get back into beading, but I have not been doing it recently. So there we go. And then if you look at, if you see this, um, it's done as a pouch and it has ribbon, but it has buttons on there. And I just did a knot instead, but it did not have any of the directions on how to do it. So that's la di da, um, Emmanuel. And so as I looked through this book, the sewing club, there is a pouch and it's a it's one that would be a drawstring bag but those directions worked so this is actually I'm working on this but it won't be a drawstring bag I'm working on this but I simply looked at those directions and that's how I made um, that's how I made that's how I figured out how to do it but I just did the opening I don't want to pull it out because I've kind of ironed it I just did the opening at the bottom. So the opening was down there at the bottom of the pouch. This is obviously, you're not going to figure out how to do it for me just telling you, but look at, look at, a look at directions on the, the Blackbird designs. There's a lot of them that they do pouches. So this is, it has enough body. So each one, so the layer lining, the backing and the front all had that light P44 um, F interfacing. And so it has enough body that it holds its shape and it's red. So as it's open, it matches. And I did very, very carefully. I did a half inch trim around the edge and I used a quarter inch seam. So you can still see that edge. Whenever you have a lining, uh, a line around the edge, it's really hard to make sure you get it straight. So I did it very slowly, but I'm very pleased with it. I was gonna leave because this is Wren. I'll put the information. This I think was almost all the called for. I did change a little bit, but this is the Wren and I was going to leave that on the back of the pouch and I thought, no, nope, linen's too precious. So I just found a fabric piece that I had that matched it. So another FFO. This one I really almost dreaded doing because I had never done one before. And that's where when I did the lacing the one night, I thought, I can do the pouch and I had my coffee and I read those directions in the sewing club and I thought I'm just going to do it and I did it and so it's been sitting in my window too so very excited. Then as oh I'm not going to go get that off the wall that I talked about in my last wool along video it is in the frame and I learned a mistake somehow as I was doing that that at one of the edges the edge Anyway, one of the edges was so tight, there was no, there was no fabric to put over the edge. And so that was a learning lesson. Cut it bigger than I expect it to be. I, I don't know why I did that. Maybe I was thinking I was going to do the packing tape, but it was literally, it, you can see the stitching kind of, if you look at it in the frame, 
So that was a learning experience. So as I did, after I did the pumpkin blossoms, then I think I did that one. And that was like, ooh, don't, don't trim those edges too tight. Give yourself that overlap. And then this was the one that I had finished. And at Valentine's Day, I just folded it over and I put it in, in the frame. Didn't tape it because I knew I was going to lace it. But I thought, even though I've watched Vaughn, I had watched Vaughn's lacing tutorial twice. And I thought, <sighs> but I got confidence. And that's the thing. You just do it. You get the confidence. Unless you can send it off to a finisher. That's just not me. Um, I am going to do my own as much as I can. That's just who I am. And so this one I was kind of nervous about because you can see there is one line of stitching all the way around the edge and you can just barely see it, but it's there and I laced it and I did it. And I was so, after I finished it, it was like, I'm so proud of myself. And so now I won't have these piles of finishes because I am afraid to do something. I have the confidence now. Maybe I'll be too lazy and not feel like doing it. But this one, because there's a, you know, because there's the backing on there, this is what the lacing looks like. I could do it neater and tidier, but no one's going to look at it except all you guys. But it's, it's not that hard. And I am simply using threads. I, I had a lot, of, I've sewn since I was 16. So I have a lot of threads, thick threads. And I have stuff inherited from my mom. So I just, before I buy anything, I am using up the stuff I have. And so whatever thick thread that I have, um, I test it. I pull on it first. And if it doesn't break, I use it. So I'm using up my threads and I now am getting that confidence. So before I didn't in my little list of all the projects that I had finished to get ready for my one year anniversary. And um, that one's probably going to be a really long video or I'll break it in two because I'm going to have a whip parade um, and I'm going to have a fully finished parade. And so this one, I wanted to check my little box it, that it was FFO'd, not just finished and not just plopped in a frame. This was a frame that I think I got at Joann's. I really like it. Um, but again, fully finished. So this last, it's only been in a week. So the bird beggars. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't share what this one was. This is beggars Valentine's. I have all the beggars. They're from Threadwork Primitives. And I will try to load up the box um, underneath the video at the end with all this information. Um, let me look at my list. Boom, boom, boom. Ugh. I'm looking at the list. The wrong one. Okay. Um, now, more FFOing um, because I'm checking those boxes off. So, project bags. I'm putting my things in unusual use. This was from Camilla. See, I have the project now in here. This was, this. I had done something and it didn't work out. Then I was going to put this pocket on another bag. It didn't work out. So this, this is like a double um, UFO, unfinished object. But I just thought, okay, let's, let's do it or get rid of it. So... This is now my project bag. This is old, an old line of um, fig tree fabrics. And I even used an old vintage button. So a vintage button. And I wanted it a pocket. I was just going to stitch it on. I thought, no, because the pocket was already prepared. There was already the stitching on it. So I just did the whip stitch. I just blind stitched because all the stitching was there. And I couldn't do a magnetic. I thought, how do I do a pocket so it doesn't sag open? I just got an old fashioned snap and I did that, but it was really tricky to do it when it was that I was going to do a button on the other side. So it was, it was probably late at night too. But anyway, I have a pocket that I can open and close. This is a finished project. And so one more FFO because it was one that I just had to let go of as I was doing this. So it's Camelot's Rose. This was just one of those pieces and I didn't have it I think I didn't have it placed right on there, but it was just going to be this piece, but I hadn't used the called for colors because that was when I was brand new at stitching and I didn't have cappuccino was the called for. The reason I purchased this is because of this alphabet. I loved this and this is the only silk that I got. So that's the dried roses silk by thread gatherer. And I'm just using my own cotton over dyed for that. 
but instead of this is supposed to be the front and that's supposed to be the back, I just switched it because I thought I love that alphabet. So this is my, um, this is my in progress. I even ironed it for you guys. Um, I love this alphabet, but I was not sure, even though this is cappuccino, cause you know, the dye lots can change. So even though this was the cappuccino, the called for 32, was that alphabet going to show up? And it does show up enough. And as I was stitching this, I realized, um, because I didn't want, you know, as I did this, look at how different that looks though. Look at just, this is Cordy's special blend, beautiful for something else, but that cappuccino is so rich. But look at this has a little hint of green in it and it looks perfect with this. So I didn't want that so light. So I did something that was not quite going to work. I'm probably going to pick that out and do something different. But anyway, I'm very happy with this. But as I was thinking, okay, I am going to use the whole purpose of that project was because I love the dried roses so much. So I have my other... You know, I have my other threads and these are the ones that I'm going to try, but here's something else I learned. I had put the dried roses silk in this bag and this was written on with um, a Sharpie pin. I had it in one of those vinyl fronted bags and um, this ink was right against the vinyl and it transferred. Then I got some alcohol and wiped it. It was on the inside of the vinyl. I cleaned it off a little bit and then I got nail polish remover and I'm surprised it didn't eat through the vinyl. It cleaned it off mostly, but lesson learned, that vinyl, vinyl can be an issue all on its own, which is another reason I'm enjoying these, but these take a lot more fabric, and it it does, I did a whole video on, on how I make these so stiff, so there is a benefit to these. So as I was trying to decide, was this really, and I took the project up to the cabin, so I wasn't gonna be doing it I wasn't going to be starting it down here where I have all my linens. Let's see, where can I throw that? So I just wanted to show you, I have all my stuff in different piles. We're going to be at this forever. Um, so I brought up just some options. I brought up other ones that might work. So this is the cappuccino, and I truly love it. It has got almost like a peach plum color to it. Um, and even though, yes, dye lots change all the time, this is 32 counts mocha. So you can see a little bit more brown. Um, but you can see like there's threads. It's almost like the lakeside linen that I'm going to show you in a moment. Then this is 36 count straw. So I just wanted to show you how similar these are. And then this was one, it was 36 count ginger linen. Uh, maybe by picture this plus it was it was one of the dyers it, it came in orange and so I just tea dyed it or coffee dyed it so this was an option too so I just had all these as options and it ended up that this one worked out I was thinking I was gonna have to go darker but no but I love these are like my these are my prim colors that I love so um, I have my lakeside linens because that's something else someone had asked me about a lakeside linen and I realize I have seven lakeside linens now, and I'm just going to compare and show you because especially those of you who don't live close to a large needlework shop, it's hard to see online. And anyway, the dye lots change, but I know I love seeing when people give comparisons and that's what I wanted to show you a comparison. But let's finish with this pile. I, this is, this is working through my crazy. Oh, look at that arm. I have been stitching and not exercising, and my arms are showing it. This is a finish. Now, um, it is, so what is this? So I have it in here. This is my fun way. Okay, so this is Key to My Heart Pillow Keep by Primitive Stitching by Shelly, A-U-E-N. But it's an Etsy shop, so Primitive Stitching, not with a G at the end. I loved this, but you know when you're stitching something and watching something upsetting, those emotions stick with you when you pull that out again or when you stitch in something there's something exciting and happy that comes back well when I was stitching this I was watching upsetting stuff and every time I looked at that it came back to me and I thought I'm gonna throw this stupid thing away and I thought no this is part of life this is part of uh, this is part of life now and so how can I redeem this 
and I trimmed it a little bit too close. The light's coming in funny, but I trimmed it a little too close, but I did the, um, I did the cross, not cross hatch. What's this called? Herringbone stitch around the edge. But as I, I've learned something as I'm making the project bags, because I do two layers of interfacing, I do an interfacing and then I do a fleece. So again, I think like three videos ago, I tell you about what I used. I stitched this onto the fabric, then I did the interfacing. That's not good because as I'm ironing it down, it had a pucker around the edge just because the iron can't get everything to touch. I had to figure out what to do. I tried, I was gonna do chenille, I was gonna do lace, and I ended up just doing, um, I think with pearl cotton, just a stem stitch around there, and it just helped hide that pucker. Um, like I'm using a bag to hide my puckery arms. But this is just one of my bags that I like. I give the dimensions um, on that video. But that's another fully finished item and redeemed. So instead of getting uh, every time I looked at that, now it's like, oh, okay, so what's in the bag? Um, so I need to find a fun project to put in the bag. So I wanted to redeem that as well. Um, my mom loved gingham and she loved little tiny flowers. And when we were together one time, I bought her this fat quarter. And then I inherited it back and I kept seeing it and I thought, I'm not going to put that in a quilt, but darn, that would make a darling um, vinyl bag. And so I am seeing vinyl. Vinyl is fun. The other bags are fun and I'm going to try to make other bags too. But the vinyl bags, man, they are so much faster than the other bags that I've been making. But this was just a fat quarter with some red on it and that I don't have anything to put it in right yet, but another fully finished I have so many things around my room. I'm looking at one right now. I get things together and I, I plan. I love the planning, the cup of coffee and the planning. And then I've created like something that I want to start and then I don't start on it. And then it just sits there in that pile with all the fabric and everything together. And that's my thing right now too. I want to finish a lot of those things for my one year anniversary. Then I want to get on. I want to do some more wool applique. I want to do some more quilting. But right now I've got all these projects that I dreamed up and I had together. So that's where I wanted to finish with a lot of these things. And then one day I was just missing my mom and I thought, I'll just make something that was some of her fabric. And so that's what I did. So this was just a piece of her fabric. She used to love, um, she loved light florals. So um, this was just about, this was basically the size of that piece. So I just made the bag the size of that piece. And I, I really enjoy matching up fabrics. So what is the inside of this? The inside of that is just a green fabric. I'm trying to use up fabrics that I wouldn't necessarily use in a quilt, but that they look pretty in project bags. Project bags are great for very small items that you can put together. It's a small finish, instant gratification, and maybe using up something that you wouldn't use in another project. That's what I'm doing. Because when I was new at quilting, there was a different style that I was doing. And I tend to do more of the the 30s reproductions more than the bolder things. So that was another finish. Okay, um, 48 minutes and I got so much to show you. I'm just gonna show you some of this right now. I did get some haul, my haul, uh, I'm halting my haul for a while um, because we had a lot of unexpected expenses or money, money going out last month. And I thought, okay, I'm done. So luckily I ordered these before that, that halt came, but I came to a new, um, floss and fabrics. She's so cute. A new Etsy shop, floss and fabrics and, um, great floss. And it, it's, I love when they package things. It, it is like getting a Christmas gift. So it was so cute. That's how the, which is great when people package things well I had our mail, per I got like three packages and they were all shoved in the mailbox. So even though I got some charts that I'll show you on my next video, cause there's too much that was didn't have a do not bend thing. And it was bent and I thought, Rawr, my mailman, he doesn't know what I've got in there. Anyway, it didn't bend and it was great, but I really love who knows if water's going to get spilled on something. So it's great when the flosses are protected, beautiful flosses. Now floss and fabrics, one of the neat things about that Etsy shop is that they have the 10 yard skeins. So just to show you real quick, the reds, I'm loving, I have something I'm going to show you with 
Country Redwood. These are great red. I am now, yep, I am now sold on the red um, samplers. So, um, Gentle Art, I'm reading it backwards. Gentle Art, Country Redwood, Ruby Slippers. And yep, dye lots are changing all the time. Uh, I go through so much of this. Uh, my first one, Shanda gave me this for the first time. Um, baked Apple. I love it for everything. Um, this is this is Barn Door, but it looks just like Calico Kitty. I didn't get Calico Kitty out to compare it, but doesn't that look the same? And then Manor Red. One more, because I know this is in uh, Blackbird that I'm already doing. And then, okay, so here's Jakey Brown. This looks just like Sanguine, and so I didn't purchase it before. It has been called for in a Blackbird, and I thought, oh, I've got something like it. And then I thought, okay, so my son is Jake, not Jacob, Jake. And I used to call him Jakey Joy when he was little, or Jakey. And so, and my maiden name was Brown. And so, Jakey Brown, how could I resist, especially when it's called for with Blackbird? So, Jakey Brown um, is mine. The other thing that I got is I wanted some finishing stuff, so I was working with Lois at um, Lady Dot Creates. So Lady Dot Creates, um, awesome. She was very helpful, um, and I picked up some stuff. So I got um, the. I, this came. I I was playing with stuff so much. This isn't in the right bag, but it's vintage. The color is vintage, and it's the eyelash eyelash chenille. I'm not sure what I'm going to use this for. I have done several projects that I showed fully finished in my last video with Buster Brown. I ordered some more. I'm not, I don't want to take these out of bags, um, but look at the different color. So they're both Buster Brown, but hand dyed. They're both gorgeous. If I got that and it was Buster Brown, it would be great. If I got that Buster Brown, great. They're both great. But if I need a, a project that uses more, obviously I'm going to use the bigger, the bigger one. Then I have some more lace. This is just called Dirty Face really vintagey looking cool and then I got chenille and it's bare and it's one of the thicker ones it's nice it does look like a teddy bear then I ordered this one this one is called Mary Jane's and I thought it was going to be black and it is more of a steel gray and so of course the dye lots are changing all the time and of course it's hard to see when you're ordering but I thought I'm I'm just simply I didn't order it for a project. I'm simply building my stash. So at 1130 at night when my creativity is wah, I can just pull out. I have a cart that I have all my cross stitch stuff on. I pull that out and I just audition and I play. And that's why I got that. Um, why I got all that. Okay, guys, working through. Okay, now. Um, I'm not going to show you my whips. Or I will. What the heck? If you guys are here, you're here. Okay. So this is, I love my bags. This, I got a little more work done. I love the planning. So I pulled out my little scrap of fabric that it's going to be a pillow. I don't need to talk fast. If people don't want to watch me, you've already, you're gone. Those of you who are watching me, because you've got nothing better to do than to watch me. Um, so, so, and so many people stay to the end. And I know they want to hear that inspiration about my sharing my love for Jesus. So I know a lot of you guys um, stay with me. So anyway, anyway, um, fabric to go on the back of this. I'm loving this. I used, I had a, uh, a linen, it was an R&R &R fuzzy sheep and it was too light. So I just tea dyed it and made it darker. So of course I'm having to do the conversion. But who is this? It's our Lori Brecklin, our very own Lori Brecklin. Um, it's Basket of Cheer. So I'm working on that and this is, I made, I started it late at night and then I couldn't sleep. So I got back up at two o'clock in the morning doing the basket, not paying attention. If you guys get this, that middle, that middle one has a space there. I didn't see it. I was just mowing across there. I did the same thing to the top. I just looked at it, watching floss tube, mowing across there. So I made double mistakes and I thought, I'll just leave. And I thought, no. Um, I fixed it. Didn't take that long, but I paid a whole lot more attention to it. So pay attention. Don't do it at two o'clock in the morning um, haphazardly. So I really, really like that, and I'm excited. I want to get my smalls finished. I was just um, my friend Allison in England. Um, she showed me her fully finish of um, Friends of the Heart, which mine is languishing, and I was telling her. Um, I'm not comfortable with all the whips that I have right now. I'm losing track of where things are and it's just too many 
whips for my comfort bevel. So I'm trying to finish up some of the smaller ones, but then I may just start another smaller one. Um, if those were the worst of my problems, I wouldn't be such a basket case. Okay, I love this. The, I love that fabric color. I have I had yards of this. This is a 30s reproduction. I have it in a lot of quilts, but I was thinking about my mama this week and about the house. Um, the house where I lived for a couple years before we got married is up for sale right now. And my dad was just telling me, and I looked at it, and I was like, whoa. And they totally changed it, but I was just thinking about my mom as I was looking through all the pictures um, that they have of, they've, they've totally redone it. But um, I was just thinking about my mom and uh, missing her and thinking about making out with my husband. He was not my husband. Uh, my boyfriend on that porch, it was just so funny. But I was thinking about my mom and I was thinking about the house and I thought, oh, oh, joyous day to help me to have happy thoughts. And because this is my joy, nevertheless, Sal, I've not been on Instagram for four weeks, I think. So did you notice that I didn't say you can follow me on Instagram because I haven't done anything on Instagram. Um, but anyway, I worked on that pink house um, just as a memento of remembering that house and how my mom made it and my dad and my brother and my sister and my boyfriend, Kurt, um, how we made it a happy home, even though it didn't look as grand as it does now, but it was a happy home. So it was just to remember, now I can look at that home and remember that tie. I want to make good, happy ties. So instead of just missing my mom, I wanted to remember how she made our home a home and a happy home, simply. Okay, so we're 56 minutes in it. Um, this is my birthday bag. So this was my French General, my favorite, my very first French General fabric. I don't have a ton of the French, French General fabric, but I love the pieces that I do have. So I love this one. And there's nothing like a project bag, especially like this one, where you got a lot of fabric to really, I, I was using the word showcase. I rewatched one of my videos and it was like, I used the word showcase like seven times. So that's the only time I'm going to use it in this one. But this is where I'm putting, um, I have my ooh la la, how appropriate, French General. I shared about this and all the things that I want to make in it on another video. So I'm just going to show you my whip. So I just did one. This is the 40 count and boy, um, it, it, uh, is hard on my old eyes. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm uh, not loving the 40 count as much as I love the 36, but what I do love is how it looks when it's done. I made a mistake. I miscounted and that's one inch farther over and I was going to redo it. And I thought, no, um, not only I'd probably rip the fabric cause it's so small, but I thought a lot of those samplers from those girls who were like seven or eight have mistakes. So this is just, it is a mistake. Um, but it's there. I'm not going to redo it. I had said that I had, I had a birthday. My birthday was the end of July and I didn't share about it until after it was over. Cause you know, when you get older, it's like oh, another birthday. I am heading, I'm in the home stretch for 60 now. I'm, how old am I? I'm 58. That's where it's like, ugh, I'm 58. Um, what's the big deal? I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm 12. So how can I be 58? I am. Don't matter. It don't matter none. Okay. So I'm being silly. Um, I was going to share with you the blackbirds that I chose. I waited even after I heard about Barb Adams' death. I waited. It always reminds me of my mom. My mom was Barbara. So there's just a lot of ties and I've loved Blackbird um, since um, for years as a quilter. And I didn't want to just go out and buy a bunch of Blackbirds um, because I'm trying to stop buying so many charts, but I wanted it to be for the right reason. That was my whole big thing that I shared about before. I wanted it for the right reason, both because I don't need any more charts. I needed to stop spending money and I just wanted to be special. So I waited and I bought them because they were special. And it, they were ones that I had been wanting. I have been wanting this since the very first time I saw it. So now I've got it. My heart can rest. I love the sentiment, especially this week. This week and last week were, my heart was not resting. So I bought that and I love it. Um, 
the the border on this is what sold me. I love those kind of borders that change. Um, and I'm not a blue person, and I want to do that blue because I want to really enjoy saturation of another color. I've wanted this for a long time because it reminds me of the cabin. I may do one that looks like a cabin. So I've a lot of these I've wanted for months. This one I saw and I really wanted and I was going to buy it and I thought, no, nope, I've got little birds. And then I thought, no, nope, I'm going to get it. So I got it. Um, what's that one? Come into my garden. Then on, um, that's, that's all I was going to buy. And then I went to get some floss on floss and, floss and fabrics, the Etsy shop. And they had some blackbirds that I had not seen before. Since then, Celeste got one of these. So Celeste got this one as well. I love birds. Um, I was a bird breeder and I've shared a lot about my tie with birds. And so I bought that just because I love it. And then I bought that just because it was a funky vase. And it reminds me of my sister um, because she loves funky artwork. And I just thought, oh, that's so unusual. So those two were like, I bought those, I saw those. And I bought them. They weren't ones that I thought about, but I was already, I needed to order floss, so those just needed to come along with it. So I could make that $35 free. So those were my blackbirds. And I guess I'm being silly because I don't want to cry. So silly is okay. Silly is okay. Um, now, I wanted to compare my, I'm tired now, and it's already an hour and one minute, and but I'm gonna keep going just because I need to do these. I don't know when my next video would be. I'm, I'm hoping to do another quilt video tomorrow, but who knows what's gonna to happen tonight that will change my mind. So I had questions about the lakeside linens that I had been showing. Let's get another drink. All right, pause guys, go get a drink. Okay, nothing like beets. Okay. Um, the lakeside linens, I keep thinking Wren. I thought Wren is my favorite linen. Wren by Picture This Plus, the perfect linen. Then I got Legacy. Oh, Legacy, the perfect linen. And then I got a different Legacy and it was just a different color. And now I'm looking at lakeside linens and I thought, the perfect linen. So they're the perfect linens for this week. So I wanted to show them to you because I, I think I bought most of them from Traditional Stitches. And they ship to you when you get it. So I got my last final shipment of something that I had originally ordered in November. Um, but honestly, they're worth the wait. So um, this one is still in the package. And I had this chart. So this chart I had seen. Let's open this up. I had seen when Celeste did her birthday haul. She had gotten this as a gift from her husband. And I paused and bought. Um, that was my habit then. I'm trying not to do that. But... I love it. So autumn gifts, and I love the sentiment. It's not a sentiment. It's a fact, man. It's a fact, Jack. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Um, every good and perfect gift is from heaven. All right. Um, and then man messes it up. Hard. Um, not just man. Man and woman. Mankind messes it up. Um, all right. Let's stay positive. That's what you guys are thinking. Chill out, girl. Okay, so here we go. The project, and it's fun because I will get a chart and it's like, oh, now I have that linen even though I ordered it months ago. This was one that I had waited. I saw this on Kim the Contented Stitcher at Valentine's Day. I had so much control. I waited months, but now I got it. And then when it came in, I had just gotten this one. So this is the lakeside linen. I'll put these. This is how I do it. Like I have it in the sleeve. Those those sleeve protectors, I cut the three-hole punch off. I put it in here so I can slide things with it. And then I have a basket that I can, I have it sitting like this. And I, it's not kitted up yet. It's just with the fabric. I don't cut that fabric because as Kitten Stitcher says, you never know what you're going to change your mind by the time you get there. So this is Vintage Meadow Rue. 36 count. It's it's pretty true. You can see there's a little bit of like pear greeny color and then the plum. I adore the plum. Okay, so then vintage light exemplar. That's why I showed you this. This calls for vintage light exemplar. Um, this is vintage light exemplar. So let's do it so you can see it maybe. Okay, so 
more of a cream. Then I have, I should have done these in, well, what order would I have done this? This is Vintage Exemplar, and I've done several things with it. So it is more like this. So let's kind of compare them. Because the colors are going to be the same, and then goodness knows the next dye lot could be different. Very, very similar. Vintage Exemplar, um, Vintage Meadow Rue. Very, very similar. This one, if I'm looking this in true light, this is a little bit more tan, and that's a little hint of more green. Gorgeous. Um, then Vintage Pearl Barley, more of a pinky. Ah, uh, pinky mauvey plum, um, rather than more of the green or the tans. So, but this light modeling is different than Picture This Plus. Um, they're they're all amazing. Um, this one though, this is this is the only one that is not vintage. And this one I just ordered. If I had known the difference of vintage, I just ordered it because it was called for. That one is maple sugar. And maybe they didn't have maple or vintage maple sugar, but you can see it's a solid, whereas that is the, the I call it molted. I don't know what the right word is. And then my last piece, this is what I did. Um, look at that. That is true. Um, it is that like a mustardy um, tan plum um, so more like more like actually not more like anything but these are the ones that are more of the plum color pinky color more of the cream and then more with the green and then look at this this is more of a of a I don't know it's like my favorite now that's what I did the pumpkin blossom so very beautiful for fall so they are all beautiful, and that's where I wanted to try to show you. Oh, I've got one more. Okay, I'm not going to be able to pull it out of the sleeve. This was one of the third, first patterns I bought, and I wanted to do it exactly. It's going to be exactly called for because the, the linen is amazing. It's vintage clay pots. So it is, it's like a salmony persimmon color. So it's to compare, you can see. So this is more salmony persimmon, and this is more plum. But if you're to look at those, if I look at those, I think, oh, I wish I had them. I wish I had them. I have them. Um, they're awesome. See, I can't even talk because I'm so excited. But um, I have plans for almost every one of those because I think I ordered those based on. Oh, I know. Um, Pumpkin Hollow. Um, Olivia was showing something on the Vintage Pearl Barley, and I think that's why I wanted to order that one, and maybe the Vintage Meadow Rue. So those are gorgeous. So I know even though this is longer, I really wanted to show that comparison because I've, I've been catching up on my comments and saying, oh, I'm going to show you. This one is going to be longer because there's a couple things that I wanted to share with you because I have them here. As I've been watching my floss tube, did I show you everything? Yep. As I've been watching floss tube, it just ignites inspires me for something that I already have. I love watching Susan Stanley, A Stitch in Time, and I love the history she shares. And she was just talking, I watched one of her videos, and she was talking about the history of thread. She was showing a hank and how the, the, the stages. I don't, I'll try to figure out which one that one was, and I'll link it. She was just talking about the history of thread, and she showed, showed her collection of wooden spools. Most of this was from my mother. This is just one of my jars of wooden spools. And yep, I got it out and I rewound each one of them. I washed it. This is, I grew up going to an old, marvelous cabin in Big Bear. Old, old cabin. It was built in the 20s and it was owned by my grandparents. My mom lived every summer there when she was little. And my mom and aunt were cleaning stuff out. And my mom was like, oh, Bonnie loves all this old funky stuff. And so I'm sure this was from that. It's an old sugar thing. So as I watch, washed it, I made sure that I left this open so I could have good air going in there. Um, but I love it. And it was so neat as I was looking and I was telling my husband, oh, one of my friends was, was talking about all these. And some of these, um, I have them in there. They're really pretty how I have them in there. But I wanted to pull one out because some of them are like brand new. And it's like, oh my word, if it's been preserved, look at it looks brand new. Is that right side up? <laughs> yep. 
Um, it looks brand new, not been used. Look at 19 cents. And I thought, I bet it's, if, if it's been kept carefully, I bet it's strong. My mom, I can't even remember how I, my mom had hers displayed and I've collected them in different places, but I just wanted to show you that. So that's in my kitchen. I have a little sideboard that I showed when I did my funky Christmas tour. Um, but as I, as I was cleaning all those threads and looking at them and rewinding them, like literally rewinding them, um, there was this old package of needles, 19 cents needles. These, these will still be good. Um, but I got, I received some, we all got to pick something that we wanted particular from my parents' house while they were still alive. And so my mom and dad could think about that we would appreciate them and get them. And my mom had this old, my parents had this old table and I told my parents everything on that, anything in the drawer, anything on top, I want that whole thing. That's what I choose because it was small. And I showed that too on my Christmas video. So this was one of the bears that it was my mom's friend, Kat, that had made this. And so this guy sits because this was for my mom. This is for my mom. So this sits on my kitchen sideboard. But now after I cleaned that, he holds these needles so he can get to work at night. Like the tailor of Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Beatrice Potter. Okay. So um, I just wanted to show you real quick because I do. Why well, real quick? If you're still here, you're still here. Um, I love seeing other people's displays and when Susan shows her collections, I love it because a lot of the things she collects, she commented, um, Susan, you commented one time and said, we're two peas in a pod. Yes. So much of the stuff that you love, I love. This is an old wooden bowl that a friend of mine got for me, I think in Brazil. Um, neat, old, st old stuff, old stuff. And then this was a newer thing that I bought. Um, I shared about, where is that? Blessed. Five times blessed Etsy shop. I got that little strawberry. So I just have that that sits right there in the corner. When I walk in my room, I see it. Hopefully I don't knock it off. And then I was going through sorting buttons from my mom's vintage button collection. This is an old ball jar, one of those um, ceramic bottoms. And this is, this is just a little collection. So I can just look at them right now. But look at this, look at this old button. Doesn't that look like a strawberry? Um, I just have one of those and it's filthy. Um, it's primitive. I love it. And then this, this is, this is really how people used to store things. They would look at that. It's all patinaed. Um, so when I do a pillow, I won't just have to mimic something old. I will just simply put this on there, but this is how they used to do it like that. They pulled the thread off. They kept it together. This all red. Look at this one looks newer, but all red like that. My mom could have done that for all I know, but just old, beautiful buttons that I can have in this collection, a leather button. And I just have it like that and I get to look at it. Yet when I go to do a project, I can just pull that off of there. So it's just one of my collections that sits in my happy room here. So now, um, I told Allison this morning when I was emailing her that I had, I have gotten gifts along the way and, um, I said, Allison, I can do this now because I won't cry. Anyway, uh, Allison sent something to me from England and, um, she's a friend I've connected with and we just email and, um, I love seeing the English countryside because I love, I've never been to England. I'm not a traveler and because we bought our cabin, that's where all our extra money goes. So we don't even plan on traveling, but I can travel to England through looking at the pictures that Allison sends me and because of the shows that we watch. So I told um, Allison when she, I said, please send me a picture of your countryside. And I showed my husband, he's like, oh, that looks just like James Harriet. I know there's a newer, all creatures great and small James Harriet. I don't like new, I like old. We have watched this so many times I can't believe this is still staying together. We have the whole series. I love it. This to me is James Harriet. I know it's not always accurate. I've, I've listened to biographies about James Harriet, but this, this is James Harriet, the countryside. Um, that's where Allison lives in this amazing green countryside. And then right now we're going through Doc Martin. This is, I know is filmed in Port Isaac, 
where, where, what island, I don't know, but it's beautiful, it's green, and that's why I told Allison it reminds me of you too. So that green, lush countryside, my husband's a stonemason and a bricklayer, and he also does other stuff too, but I'm looking out in my garden, stonework. So as we're watching old English shows, I don't like most new things, I like old things. We love looking at the architecture, we love looking at the old crumbly stonework, and we love looking at the green countryside. So that's, that's kind of what brought Allison and I together is I was so attracted to what she was sharing with me and then she shows me her England and her village and I love it. And so that connection has just grown and she made me a project bag and it's Peter Rabbit. And Allison, I don't know, I cannot remember if I shared with you why Peter Rabbit, Beatrice Potter was so important to me. When, and here's, so here's the funny story and this is gonna go longer. Um, and this is what, okay, so I'll tell you the funny story about Beatrice Potter and me and my husband <laughs> um, in a minute. But she also sent, sent me, so Shropshire, she sent me this. And it's because it's about bears. She knows I love my bears because of my mom. And she sent me a picture of this iron bridge. And so I read through this and I was looking, you know, I read through this whole magazine. It's, it's neat. And she sent me these things that were from the Louvre. And um, it's just so precious. But I read through this and, um, and I, loved reading, I loved reading it about someone else's culture. And anyway, so when she sent me a picture of that iron bridge, there was a picture of a stone building in the back and that's where I shared, that's why I want to do this project. Um, this I've had a long time, but it's still available. Um, homespun elegance from the designer on her Etsy shop. But when I do this, this is, I'm thinking of Allison's village, Allison's England. So that's what I wanted to share about that is just this sweet tie that Allison and I have and, and what she sent me. She sent me that honestly months ago, but I just, I needed to do it without crying. So I pretty much did it. So Beatrice Potter, um, and Peter Rabbit. And I'm, I'm sure, um, or that this is just very English. So in, Allison, tell me, did I tell you about Beatrice Potter? I'm going to tell everybody now. So when I was growing up, I loved old things. Always I've loved old things. And um, one of the things that I loved was Beatrice Potter. I can't remember exactly why. I was trying to think about it and I thought, why? I can't remember what it was. Did I read the books? Was there something that I learned about her life? I can't remember. I just remember I had always loved Beatrice Potter. Then also, that thought, then the thought of, and I'd always, whenever I was gonna have my children, they were gonna have Beatrice Potter things. So this room was my son Jake's, he was my first. This room was his nursery. This room, my mother and I did Beatrice Potter wallpaper on there and it was feminine because I was just sure I was gonna have girls. I had two guys, um, but it was Beatrice Potter. And it was so fun, but and a baby doesn't care. It was kind. It was blue and pink and white. That was back then. Blue and pink or white were the baby colors, but it it was feminine. So everything was Beatrice Potter. Um, everything that was that was that was the linens that I had for his crib. I everything was Beatrice Potter. And then with that concept that I knew everything was going to be Beatrice Potter. Um, then. Um, and I, for those of you who may not know, Beatrice Potter was the creator of Peter Rabbit. I'm sure everyone knows who Peter Rabbit is. Okay, so keep in that mind too. When I was young, I was I love Lucy. When she told Ricky that she was pregnant, she did it in a special way. You got to find that is classic. So when I watched that when I was a kid, I just thought, okay, when I get pregnant. And I tell my husband, it's going to be in a special way. And I was just, damn, that's a fact. I didn't, it, that sounded like I swore. It, it was, anyway, um, it was going to be special. Because <sighs> I can hardly talk, it's 19 minutes, but that wasn't a swear word. Anyway, um, so when I did tell my husband that I was pregnant, I knew I was pregnant a week before I was able to tell him because I, I, how did I know? I didn't want to tell him until it was special and he was working overtime. And so I had this knowledge 
that I was pregnant. And then like two days after I found out, I was out, I always worked hard. Um, I was a woodworker and I was lifting a big piece of wood to cut it because I was 27 when I got pregnant. I'd lived 27 years toting, toting logs and lifting bales. Now I was doing woodwork and I, I felt like I pulled something in my stomach and I thought, oh, I got a baby in there now. What if I hurt it? And so I went to the doctors and I said, oh, I felt something. So um, they did a ultrasound and I got to see Jake when he was only a few weeks old. No, I didn't know I was pregnant for a month and a half. So he was a month and a half um, when I saw him and I saw the little heartbeat and it was just like, I've got this baby in here, but I couldn't tell my husband because I was going to tell him this special way. So I did this thing. I basically, I kidnapped him. I took him up to the mountains and it, even though we had the cabin at the time, we went to ho a hotel that I had pre-booked and it, it was a long story about, we, we went to the door, even of this place. And I, I just said, oh, let's just see, let's look around at this hotel. This is where some friends of ours had stayed. And so we were just walking around. He was just going along with me. We were walking around and I had, I had sneakily, I had gotten the key to that room without him even knowing. And so we're at the door, we were just walking along and I said, oh, Kurt, doesn't this look fun? Wouldn't it be cool to look in this room? And he's like, cause he was used to me doing weird things. And he was like, huh? And I whipped out the key. I opened the door. He's like, what are you doing? And I said, this is our room. And so it was so fun. It, I, I didn't always do things like that. So I really had to plan it. So we walk in this room and he had worked all day. I didn't realize he had not eaten for a long time. So we get there cause we were going to go out to dinner. We get there. And then it's, it is totally like Ricky and I love Lucy. So I had planned everything. I got bubble bath stuff and I had strawberries and I had champagne and I can't find the Peter rabbit, but I had a stuffed Peter rabbit and on it, on the tag, I wrote, we're going to have a baby. Um, so keep all that in mind. And so I'm, you know, he finally realizes we're here and I said, I'm going to go start the bubble bath. It was this wonderful big bathroom with this big jacuzzi bubble bath. And so I'm filling the tub and it was ginormous and I'm putting the bubble bath in and nothing's happening. And I thought I want bubbles and I'm pouring more in no bubbles, pouring more in no bubbles. And then here's the I love Lucy part. And then boom, I push the button for the jets. Oh, bubbles happen. Just like that one where she's cooking in the oven and everything pours out. Bubbles were everywhere. <laughs> bubbles were everywhere. And so finally we get in the tub. He has, we have the strawberries and we have the champagne and I'm not drinking that champagne because I got a baby inside there. And, um, so all he had had was little bit of strawberries. He drank a lot of the champagne because I wasn't and we were on a weekend and he's in the hot water. And then I give him the Peter Rabbit and he's looking at it and he's looking at me and he's like, okay. And I thought, darn it. I, w I was, I was going to keep not having children. We'd been married seven years and I liked having money and a quiet house and I could do whatever I wanted. So he was like, honey, time's a ticket and let's have a baby. And it was like, Oh, really? The house is going to be a mess and I won't have any money. So at that moment, all I could think of was you were the one that said it was time to grow up and have a baby. I thought he had seen the tag. He was just thinking, what's she giving me a stuffed animal for it? And I said, I must've said like, look at that tag. Anyway, he looked at the tag. We were going to have a baby. And of course it was exciting. Gosh, that kid is 30 years old now, but I can still remember it. So it was fun. And then there was heated towels. And anyway, it was so funny because he gets up and out and dries off with a heated towel. And then he walks and he goes, he just like, he melted. He passed out on the floor because of the champagne and he hadn't eaten and warm water and happiness of, of a baby coming. So it was hilarious. So it was very, I love Lucy. It was very different when I told him about my second son. So that's another story, another funny story, but it was different. But that little Jake, that little Jakey joy was a preemie and he was not born on Christmas day as he was supposed to be. He came on December 3rd. So he fit in this little tiny thing. He's tall now. 
He is tall. He's not quite six foot, but that little Jakey Joy fit in this. Isn't that cute? I was looking for that Peter Rabbit, and this is what I found. I couldn't find the actual Peter Rabbit that probably has water stains on it. But look at this. Baby stains. Peter Rabbit. And then this. I'm going to do something with this because it's just sitting in there. This was like one of his little baby towels. It was a kitchen towel, but Peter Rabbit. And then I found this. My mom had made him a blanket, and this was the leftover piece. And I thought, okay, it's totally wrinkled. Yes, but project bag. So I'll have a matching project bag of the one Allison gave me. So anyway, that's the Peter Rabbit story. Now it's an hour and 25 minutes. Anyway, as I was obsessed with thinking about Peter Rabbit and knowing that I was going to finally share about this without crying, um, I just started watching documentaries about Beatrix Potter. I used to always call her Beatrice Potter, Beatrix Potter. I now have a playlist on my channel of all these different Beatrix Potter documentaries or people that went to visit um, the dist the Lake District or where the movie was filmed. I'm just putting stuff there and, and I'm loving it. So if you want to learn about Beatrix Potter and watch some of these amazing documentaries, um, that's the story. Plus, Miss Potter was an amazing video and now I know, okay, so um, her fiance did not die the way he did on the on the video, but amazing, wonderful. Wow, an hour and 26 minutes, and now I can barely talk, but the good stuff. So those of you who stay for the good stuff, for to hear, for to hear, and let's get another drink. It says green tea extract in it, too. I make a fun concoction, so that'll get me stimulated. Um, anyway, the good stuff. So this is where I share about my faith in action. Um and how my Jesus helps me in all my messy times. So um, I, we've, we've just had, like I said, some extra stuff going on. So there, we feel like we're just being hit and, hit and hit from every side right now. And now this extra thing going on with our community in the mountains and I'm having to call different agencies to try to deal with this. And that, that is not my comfort zone at all. And it's, it's given me a lot of stress. But I'm walking through it and gaining confidence and learning that I can speak clearly to people that need to know things. So it's been interesting, but it's been also pretty depressing. And we have not been up there as much because of this thing going on um, that hopefully will we'll stop soon. But I was talking to my husband and we've just both, we've both been dealing with depression and so we were just talking about it this morning. How do we deal with our depression? How do I deal with my depression? I stitch. I want to still produce something. So that's how my stitching is helping me. Even though I've not been connected, I will get back on Instagram. Um, but I just, it's just, I'm, I'm stitch mode right now. So I was talking to him about losing hope. I don't want to lose hope. I was talking to a friend last night and she's like, you got to stay positive. And it's like, I know. I know, but it's kind of hard right now. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So also in that, I've had a couple people ask about my devotionals. So this is one. So this is prayers and promises for depression and anxiety. And in this, I was just looking at hope. And so I found a perfect little devotional. And then something else that I found, I, I ran in. I was on hold with a chat that I was doing um, on the computer. And I, I was reading through this other one, which I will share, Billy Graham hope for each day. This is a morning and evening. They were both about hope. And I grabbed this and I told Kurt, I said, you got to read this. This is perfect. And um, then I ran in and finished the chat. So um, that's how I've been. I've been like spinning like a top. So hope, got to keep hope in my heart. And I know we've been praying about this, specifically praying about this situation in our little mountain community and just asking God to go before me because it's bigger than us right now. And it seems unstoppable at the moment. Um, but it, it's not. And our God is a big God. And so I've just been asking God, help me have the right attitude about this. Because I've been angry. Not a good place to be. Um, especially when we're going to our little quiet retreat. And so I was just asking God, show me hope. And as we were talking to some, some of our neighbors there who were, were working together, um, we were just talking and it was just kind of, we were just kind of depressed. And I just said, hey, let's pray. And, um, and we did. And, um, I said, that's where my hope is. That's where my hope is. So this is, this is from this one. Hope. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to those who seek him. Lamentations 325. I've memorized a whole chunk of that. Um, hope will never bring us shame, 
That's because God's love has poured into our hearts. This happened through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, Romans 5, 5. Then the Lord, the Lord delights in those who fear him and those who put their hope in his unfailing love, Psalm 147, 11. And then the, the little talking point, God, my hope, you, well, it's a prayer. God, my hope, you are the one I look to today. Meet me in this moment, breathing life into my weary heart. I feel it weary. Fill my mind with your peace. When my path goes bumpy and I am uncertain on how things will turn out, I turn to you. That's like my life in every area right now. Um, I don't have to know everything, how it will all play out in my life. I just need to know you. I need to know who you are. In you, I find my hope. Come close, Lord, and lift my head. Your unfailing love surrounds me. Then knowing that God always hears you, what can you be hopeful for? And that's where, as I was taking a walk with Riley, and I was walking in the mountains by this situation that's not happy right now, I just thought, what can I do? I thought, I'll keep walking. I needed, the, I needed to walk and walk and walk and walk. And so I walked up the steep hill. And it was really good. It was really good to work all that uh, negative stuff out. And then I was just praying, praying, Lord, you please go before me. Lord, you help me to have the attitude about this. Lord, please put a stop to this if this, that's your will. Or please help us to know how to deal with this without anger if this is your will. And it's been an amazing week. Um, not easy, but amazing. Then this one. So God is my hope. Um, this is from August 18th in the evening. Hope for the heart. My heart is glad and my flesh will also rest in hope. Psalm 16, 9. Perhaps the greatest psychological, spiritual, and medical need that all people have is the need for hope. Dr. McNair Wilson, the famous cardiologist, remarked in his autobiography, Doctor's Progress. His quote is, hope is the medicine I use more than any other. Hope can cure nearly anything. Years ago, as Dr. Harold Wolf, professor of medicine at Cornell University Medical College and associate professor, professor of psychiatry said, hope, like faith and a purpose in life, is medicinal. This is not a statement of belief but a conclusion proved by meticulous, controlled, scientific experiment. When hope dies, despair will overwhelm us. Hope is both biological and psychologically vital. Men and women must have hope, and true hope comes only from Christ. He gives us hope for the future as we turn in faith to him. Hope for eternity and hope for right now. That's been huge as my husband and I are just talking about what what to do in all these different situations we're dealing with, how to keep moving forward just through our daily life with hope and with positivity. And we see we've both been depressed and we've both been anxious, but we've both also been productive, but it's been a struggle. And that's why I don't always have it within me to push record, um, not because I don't talk about my problems, but just because sometimes I just need to quiet my mind and just stitch. And obviously an hour and 33 minutes is kind of exhausting, but it's wonderful. And um, I had done a video the other day after I went on a visit down to Primitive Gatherings and it just, it ended up being not a video that I was going to post, but it was good for me to do because doing these videos is very good for me. Even though I'm usually an inside my head thinker, doing this thinking out loud is very good for me. So I've never been one to really journal very well. This is like my journaling. So thank you guys for being a part of my life, both my stitching, my stories, my hope, my discouragement, my joy, my frustrations, and being in this with me, especially as I'm looking at my one year anniversary and I was telling my husband this morning, this, what I would call a video project, is what I saw it at the beginning, has become such an important part of my life this year, especially as, even though I'm, I'm with the public all the time, I work with the public all the time. Not large pe amounts of people, but just like one, usually one little unit at a time. Uh, so I'm not lonely, but we all feel separated. 
all of us in some way or another. This has been so good for me. So I thank you guys for being a part of this with me. Knowing that people in different pockets all over the world are here in my room with me being a part of this and your love showered upon me is huge and I just appreciate it so much and so just for you to know even though sometimes I do back away from my emails from my comments from my Instagram or even from pushing record you are there with me and I know that that time will come again where I can push record and share with you a gazillion things and you'll be in this with me in in some extent so thank you guys God bless you and may you and may I choose joy nevertheless. Goodbye.